Well, this video is long overdue. Uh, the last one I posted, I said that I'd gotten the blower and I was going to go have it installed. Well, I've had the blower installed for about a month now. Um, just yet, I haven't really gotten around to making the video. Started to do something. I was going to do a whole uh, document of how I went down and got it done and document that process. And, but then I realized, you know what? I don't really think anybody really cares about that. The, the, the goal of this for you guys was just to show you and answer maybe some questions that you have that I had about modding your car. Um, I, I am not interested in showcasing my life. I'm just an average everyday guy who goes to work and has to watch his money and pay his bills. And I'm not one of these uh, YouTubers who gets a new car every other week. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have this one for a while. Um, so I really just would rather just try to um, answer questions or kind of show you some of the roadblocks that I've hit so that you don't hit them when you start modding your car. So yes, so had the blower right here for about a month. Um, the process to get it installed was interesting. Um, and we'll talk about that. And so I can tell you guys some things that you might want to look out for uh, when you're getting ready to install your blower or have it installed. So I ordered the kit from a vendor, had it sent to me, um, got a um, appointment with the speed shop, which is about three weeks out. Uh, so the speed, the speed shop's about three hours away from me. So got everything set up, um, drove down to the shop, was gonna spend two days down there, um, get a hotel while they installed the blower, that way I can just go down there and come back. So first day they start, and I get a, a phone call, and they're like, hey, David, um, some of these parts aren't matching up with what's on the instruction manual. And I was like, okay, well, what do you mean? Well, you know, we need the specific pipe for your intercooler, and the pipe that they sent us is entirely wrong. We can't finish the install until we get this pipe. Like, great. So, for the kit that I ordered, it takes or take three weeks to put the kit together and send it to you. So any delay in that, any part not there, uh, is a, it could be a potential um, long delay. So obviously I'm freaking out. I call the vendor, um, talk to them. And I have to say that I was a little frustrated because I felt like when I was talking to customer services or customer support that they acted like I didn't know what I was talking about, that I was making this stuff up. Um, asked if I could talk to Vortec directly, they wouldn't let me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that was the first thing. Well, as we come to, as they continue, they, they skip that part for the intercooler and they go work on something else. And they call me back and like, David, this part's missing. And then this part's missing. All in all, I think I probably called the vendor about eight times because parts were missing and I was on a time crunch. If I couldn't get this done, it could possibly be another three weeks before I could go back and get it. My car was gonna sit at the shop. The shop was, was backlogged. So, after it was all said and done, Vortec called me, themselves the engineers. Now you have to understand, Vortec is a very, very small company. I, I, I wanna say it's like eight people. Um, very small company. They called me. Excellent customer service. Excellent. David, what can we do? What's wrong? Oh, you know what we realized? We realized that we sent you the, the hardware for an 11 to 17 Mustang, not an 18, 19. Let us get that to you overnight, okay? So, Tuesday, I come down, build starts on Monday. Tuesday, uh, I have to work on Wednesday, so I leave. Tuesday, drive three and a half or three hours back. They give me a call at noon on Wednesday saying all the parts were delivered and the car is ready. So drive another seven hour round trip Wednesday to get the car. Um, I have to say the guys at Pro Dino, top notch, great, great shop. Dan, TJ, Paul, uh, just were, were great guys to work with. They took care of me and got it done even though they had other customer cars that they needed to work on. So, cars done as far as the install goes so i went through that whole story about getting the blower installed and <laughs> can you tell i'm not good at this i forgot the most important part of the story that i was trying to relay to you guys 
is that when you buy a supercharger kit, if you get it sent to your house or if you get it sent to the speed shop, have somebody go through the parts guide that they send with it and make sure that every part that you're supposed to have is there. If I would have done that when I got my blower, then there wouldn't have been any problems with the install. You don't even have to know anything about cars or parts or installing things. You just look at the parts list and make sure every part that is listed on that installation guide is there. I wish I would have done that. Um, it would have saved me a lot of time and money. Um, so yeah, make sure that all the parts are there prior to scheduling an install, especially if you're scheduling an install with a shop that's three months or three weeks out, or you know it's three hours away. Make sure you do that. Okay. Now back to your regular scheduling program. But you still have to tune it. So I elected to do the uh, street tune through Lund Racing. I wasn't going to put on a dyno. Um, I, I figured that I could just do a street tune. Um, and I will have to say, if you are at a, in a place where there's a lot of open roads and no traffic, you can do a street tune. Here living in the city, it was a little difficult because you had to run the car through some, some paces. The car has to, you know, put it in fourth gear start at 2500 rpms and rev all the way up to 7500 rpms and you're data logging that you're data logging um running and letting the car shift itself i mean it's it's, it's probably i i would say that i exchanged probably eight maybe data logs with brandon from lund racing um and that's great i like it they want to look at all the data they want to make sure that the car is running right they want to make sure that um you know, it's not running lean or too rich. You know, at one point I had gotten some bad gas coming home from picking the car up, and it was it was the, the gas was the mixture was reading horrible, um, showing really 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 low spark, and so um, I had to put in some octane booster, and that fixed the problem. So that just goes to show that not all 93 gas is created the same. So you need to make sure that you're getting good 93 gas if you're going to supercharge. So go through that whole process. It took, it took a few days um, because in the meantime there I got sick and you know didn't have time to, or didn't feel like going and, and running the car. But then eventually got the final tune and got it done. And like I said, I've had the blower on now for a month. And so what do I think about it? Um, particularly, you know, coming from a TBS or from a root style uh, cars now to this, what are my impressions? Well, it's a very different beast. Um, you know, when you look at a positive displacement supercharger or something that sits on top of the manifold, you know, it theoretically increases the engine size. Um, they are amazing uh, down low power, down low torque. You know, it's the, the guys at the shop call those, you know, the whipples, the tire shredders, because at the low end, it, it's just, it burns the tires. And not so well at the top end. Another thing about the root style of TVS blowers is uh, heat soak. They produce a lot of heat. Um, you know, after about two or three runs with one of those, it, it's the car is not going to have as much horsepower because it's just completely heat soaked. This car, it almost works like a turbo, except it doesn't uh, you know, come off work off the exhaust. Um, so, for example, right now it's 86 degrees outside. I've been driving the car for 10 minutes, and with this massive intercooler that I have tech unit my IATs are only 90 degrees only 90 degrees it stays it stays cool uh, so I don't have to worry about the heat soak like the, uh, like the other blowers do and what's interesting about this is you know as the RPMs increase the car produces more horsepower so where a Whipple's car would melt the tires you know starting off my start off is okay but once I get to 7500 RPMs it she'll break loose she'll break the tires it's, it's the craziest thing. So the more RPM, the more horsepower she produces. Now then, um, how is that as far as fun? Well, to be honest, uh, not as fun as as far as the wow, the wow factor. You know, you get into a Whipple car and you mash the gas and it throws you in the back of your seat and it's just it just feels fast. This doesn't feel fast. It feels very stock up to about 5,000 RPMs. 
and once it hits that 5,000 RPM mark, you can start feeling the power build and the car start to speed up. Um, so you don't have that wow factor. You're not going to get in here and be like, oh my God. Um, it's, a, it's a gradual increase, which I feel like makes it easier to control when you're racing off the line. So you don't have to worry about melting the tires. You can kind of get into it a little more. You have to worry about it when you get into higher RPMs. And that's when you'll start seeing you know, the, the tires want to want to break loose. Another thing I think a lot of guys forget when it comes to you know supercharging your car and doing stuff is you also have to worry about the suspension. The suspension work is very important as well, and that's something that I was very concerned about and wanted to make sure that all, that was done prior. Well, I was working on that prior to actually install the supercharger. So with a whip blower or a positive displacement blower, you lose access or you lose the ability to put your strut tower brace on. It won't fit. The strut tower brace will not fit on top of the supercharger. With the Vortec unit, I, my strut tower brace is there, but I can still have you know some of that suspension components that I had prior um, that I feel like is important. That's a very overlooked thing. definitely do not get the sound from the Vortec that you will get from a whip. You don't get the whine, you get the whistle. And uh, I'll play a clip of what the whistle sounds like right here. Um, I like it. It kind of gives more of a, a sleeper type of uh, appeal or sound to me. People who don't know it don't know what it is, um, which I think is kind of cool. So I, I really enjoy that. Uh, my 93 cover was a uh, Vortec Supercharged. And that, that whistle definitely brings back uh, a lot of memories for me. Price. Price-wise, um, which is always a, a component, the, the Vortec unit was much cheaper than the Whip unit. Um, and I feel like, not only is it cheaper, but I also feel like that the, the Vortec unit is supercharger is this is very controversial. Not no supercharger is great for your car, but I feel like in the grand scheme of things, a Vortec unit is a little easier on your car than a Whipple or, or root style supercharger because of the heat suck, because of other things. Um, I have a friend of mine who has an 01 Cobra and has had his Vortec on there for, I don't know, 150,000 miles and literally no problems at all with the Vortec unit. Um, another thing with this particular Vortec uh, head unit is it is self-lubricating, self-contained, self-oil contained, so you have to change the oil in it by itself, uh, which is going to be interesting. The last, you know, when you have your, your whip or whatever else it also it runs on the engine oil so you don't have to worry about that but this unit you will I will have to change the oil on my own so all that why do I think I'm actually really happy with it uh, it's a great daily driver once again under 5,000 rpms you can't even tell it even has a supercharger on it when I was driving the car home from Charlotte um, I was on the highway and this car got 26 miles to the gallon with a blower. That is insane. Now mind you, I wasn't getting into boost at the time, but still, 26 miles to the gallon. Uh, I saw that it's great. It's great for daily driving. It's great for the, with this automatic. It's, it's really crazy how the automatic uh, has a sweet shift points and it keeps the car in boost when you're going. I mean, she moves. It moves. No, no doubt about it, this car moves. Now then, horsepower numbers. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, the goal was to head down to Mustang Week and do the Pro Dino, uh, Dino shootout and see what numbers she made. And well, Mustang Week got canceled because of Corona. So I have no idea what she's making. I imagine, um, if other builds hold true, that you're looking at between 650 and 700 to the rear wheels, I, I don't know. Um, and we'll see. I don't know when I'm actually going to have it dynoed. Uh, you know, this this whole pandemic has really thrown a wrench into everything. Um, hopefully soon, because I'm curious to see. 
but uh, I, I don't know what numbers she's making. But I can tell you now, even when I'm not getting into it, when she shifts from third to fourth, she sparks the tires. something else with the, the car that I will do in a later video um, because it wasn't as clear-cut as it should have been but um, to show you guys and help you understand um, I'll, I'll do another video on that here soon but I hope it answers some questions if you have any more questions just ask and um, I'll, I'll answer them but yeah well, I'm, I'm very pleased I'm very happy you know, good customer service from Vortec, good customer service from Pro Dino, really made this experience overall very good. Um, and those two companies have a customer for life. So, all right, well, appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm gonna have some fun and talk to you guys later.